Welcome to Texas State University's Chemistry 2330 Introduction to Organic Chemistry. I am your guide, Dr. David Irvin. We will continue with Chapter 7, Part 2, Haloalkanes. In Chapter 6, we introduced the topic of mechanisms for different types of reactions. In this particular chapter, we're going to discuss what we call nucleophilic substitution reactions, meaning attack of either a lone pair or a negative charge to substitute something else on an sp3 hybridized carbon. Okay. We have a couple different ways in which we can do these mechanisms, and we're going to put them into two extremes. The first extreme is called the SN2 reaction, which is a substitution that involves a nucleophile, and it's bimolecular, meaning that two molecules are in its transition state. And when we have this, because we have to have two molecules in that transition state, the rate of it is controlled by the concentration of not only the substrate, the haloalkane, but also the concentration of the nucleophile itself. And so if we looked at our rate constant, our K would be equal to it, our K times the concentration of the haloalkane times the concentration of the nucleophile. Okay. So because both of the reactions are present in the transition state, it is the rate determining step. In the transition state, the nucleophile, the negatively charged nucleophile, comes in to the um, substrate on the opposite side of the carbon from where the leaving group is. In this case, we have a bromine as our leaving group and our OH group as our nucleophile. Notice this has a negative charge. These electrons are going to come in and form our new sigma bond as we go through this transition state. And the electricians, electrons between the carbon and the bromine are going to leave with the bromine after the transition state has gone. Remember, the transition state is that instantaneous point where we are making and breaking a bond at the exact same time, so that this takes place very quickly and we end up with our products of our newly formed uh, product from the nucleophile and our halide being left as a leaving group. Okay. The key step in this reaction is the nucleophile coming in, forming a new covalent bond, and then ejecting out a new nucleophile. Okay, so when we look at this, um, uh, reaction with an energy diagram, we see that in an SN2 reaction, because the nucleophile is coming in and the leaving group is leaving all at the same time, we have one transition state and no intermediate. So we have a single activation energy to get to our transition state. And then as the uh, halide leaves, we end up going down to products. In this particular uh, energy diagram, we have uh, an exothermic reaction because the kinetic energy potential energy of the starting materials is greater than that of our products. Okay. The other end of the spectrum is what we can call an SN1 reaction or a substitution with a nucleophile and it's unimolecular. What that means is that we have the leaving group leave before the, the, out, the new formation of the sigma bond. Because of this, we only depend on the concentration of the substrate or the haloalkane. Therefore, our rate law is simplified by their K times the concentration of our haloalkane. So in an SN1 reaction, we have to do it in steps. So the first step that we would see is the breaking of a bond to form a stable ion or molecule, which is pattern number five from chapter five. Okay, so what we have here is the electrons from the bromine are kicked out onto the bromine and so it leaves as a negative charge. And when the electrons are removed from this chloride, it create, uh, the carbon creates a positive charge. And so we generate a carbocation intermediate. Okay, and that carbocation, carbocation intermediate is trigonal planar. Okay. Because this is the slow step in the reaction, this is the one that requires the highest amount of um, activation energy to get to this reactive species. Okay. 
after we have that species leave, we can now have a tag by the nucleophile to generate the new sigma bond. In this case here, we're using alcohol as the nucleophile and the electrons on the lone pair of the oxygen come in and can form a new sigma bond on either side of that trigonal planar intermediate. What that means is that we can form two different possible um, stereoisomers from this product. And in fact, we'll form them in equal concentrations because there's no specificity for one side or the other of the reaction. Notice this is a very fast reaction and it is because the formation of the carbocation is the rate determining step. If we're attacking with a neutral nucleophile, we're gonna end up with a charge species here. We have a protonated oxygen and a positive charge on oxygen. Therefore, the last step in this particular attack by the nucleophile is to remove the oxygen with some other Lewis base in solution, yielding our neutral product at the end, in this case, an ether. So if we look at the energy diagram, because we are forming that intermediate and we go through two different transition states, we have two humps in our energy diagram. In the first rise of here, this is the activation energy to, uh, to break the carbon-bromine bond to form the carbocation. The carbocation is this reactive intermediate in this valley here. The second activation energy is getting the carbocation near the nucleophile or the lone pair of the species coming in. And then, of course, cascading down into products. Okay. Because it only matters that the, we have to ionize the carbon-bromine bond is the first and slow step. It only, the rate is determined by the concentration of the alkyl halide. Okay, now when an SN1 reaction occurs from a secondary uh, halo alkane, that means we form a secondary carbocation. Now, what we learned in chapter five was that tertiary carbocations are more stable than secondary carbocations, and therefore we might see a rearrangement if possible. Either a hydrogen will move one carbon over to give a more stable tertiary carbocation, or a methyl group will move over one carbon to give a tertiary carbocation. So we need to look for rearrangements whenever we're using those secondary alkyl halides. Okay, <clears throat> so because we're forming that trigonal planar species and the nucleophile can come in and attack on either side, we end up forming a racemic mixture, meaning half of it will come from one side of the molecule, half of it will come from the other side of the molecule, giving us a one-to-one -one ratio of the two different possible isomers. And there's no way to control that if you are going through this trigonal planar carbocation. Okay, so now what we're gonna do in the next video is look at what evidence we have to consider that there are two different mechanisms going on. What effects the structure of the nucleophile has on the reaction rate? What does the structure of the haloalkane have on the reaction rate? What effect does the leaving group have on there? And finally, what effect the solvent might have on that reactive species?